Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Solomon Smith. This guy here, he's the founder of an amazing charity called the Brixton Soup Kitchen, which helps homeless people and people struggling financially with access to our food, um, help looking for jobs, counseling, clothes donations, and lots of other amazing things. And Solomon's just an awesome guy. You know, he started volunteering before he was 10 years old. And so he's got a really interesting story. And yeah, I hope you enjoy hearing about his story and about the work he does. If you enjoy the episode, please hit subscribe as it really helps this channel to grow. And yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. Solomon, thanks for doing this, man. Yes. So, am I right you were born in Brixton? Yes, so I was born in um, Moreland Estate, yeah. um, also known as Summerlater. What was uh, what was life like growing up in, in Brixton? Um, life was life was amazing growing up, you know. You know, we don't know about poverty, we don't know about, you know, you know, life as having money. So we're all used to just not having money and, you know, going top shop with fifty P if you had a pound, that was a good day. But if you had fifty P it was good, you was able to survive. So yeah, my growing up was growing up was amazing. When did you first kind of notice and, you know, kind of think you wanted to, to help out with homelessness and, and things like this? Um, I knew I wanted to help out in, with homelessness from the age of, say, about eight, nine years old. You know, I remember going to Brixton with my mum and literally just seeing a lot of homeless people just on the floor, you know, holding cardboards to say please give me money, I'm hungry. And I was like, huh? So if they don't beg for money, they're not going to get to eat. But I can go home, have a shower, play PlayStation, and get a cooked meal. And that's when it, it literally hit me from a very young age that I was quite lucky. You know, these are things that we take for granted. And... I always say to people, it's not until it's taken away from you, that's when you actually appreciate it. And I started appreciating for things from a very young age. And I was literally, I was just like, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to bed. You know, I'm looking out the window and I'm like, it's raining. You know, how do they feel, you know, being out there in the rain? And I'm just on the other side, just in my bed put it on the heater, it might get too hot, leave it, open up the window. I was able to do all those things where a homeless person was thinking, I need to get a shower. You know, I need to find food. You know, all I do is go downstairs and get food. You know, so for me, I kind of saw things a bit different to how a lot of people saw things. Any idea where that came from? You know, most young people, you know, see homeless people and don't, have that kind of reaction you had what where do you think that came came from any Honestly, idea i couldn't tell you i couldn't tell you it's like i remember seeing action figures left outside from someone playing with an action figure and the way how my mind would work is going to be like oh the action figure is going to be left outside all alone by itself it's going to be cold so i literally used to take the action figure home I like pull it under my covers, a toy, wow. and I was like, "Am I weird? Like, oh, why am I doing that?" But that that was my mindset. My mindset was thinking, "I'm I'm literally walking on the street, seeing a toy on the floor, and I'm thinking that toy has feelings. I'm th I'm thinking of the feelings for the toy. You know, I'm f I'm I'm feeling right now. It's it's gonna get dark." And you're going to be out all night. You know, I don't want to be out all night. And I know probably you don't want to be out all night. So I would literally take the toy home and put it under the covers. And then make it sleep in my mind. And then the next day I put it with all my other toys and be like, meet all the other toys. That is what I used to do. And I was thinking, it's crazy. That's a bit nuts. But it was from then what kind of gave me the care for the toys is what kind of gave me care for other people what didn't have what I had. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So what were some of the first like volunteering things you got involved with? I think you were like you were young, you were handing food out food out to homeless people. I sort of think I saw online. Like, yeah, yeah, so um when I started secondary school, um I used to um I used to contain food so my parents would cook. So they'd literally be like four of us in the house, my twin, m- me, my little brother, my little sister, and my mum and my dad. And literally my mum's cooking like she's cooking for a party. And that's what, especially like Caribbean backgrounds are like. So what I used to do was contain food when I was like on my way to school and literally give it to the homeless from then. That was probably like 97, 98. Yeah, yeah, like 98, because 98 I'll be near eight. So yeah, from there, from then. After school, before, kind of in the years after school, and then before you set up the Brixton Soup Kitchen, what were you up to for those few years and just life and, and then also in volunteering? What were you, what were you doing? So um, my background is youth work. So um, I was a youth and community worker and I was doing that for the local council. And again, a lot of things I learned from working as a, as a youth worker for local government is what kind of changed my ethos on running a company or even a charity. You know, so for me, I worked in Lambeth and I remember we was getting Orton Towers. This is like, Orton Towers for us is like going to Disneyland. And you know, a guy was like, I live on across the road, but across the road, I can literally see a youth club from my house, but my side is Croydon Council. So they are basically not allowed to access our service because he's on Croydon and the other side is Lambeth. So I was like, no, you're from Lambeth. And I'm thinking, why do I have to commit those little crimes for a young person to actually uh, go on to a trip. And that's when I said, for me, if I was to ever start my own youth organisation or I'm going to start up something, I'm going to make sure I banish postcodes, boroughs, I don't care. Our thing is, is if you can come from Timbuk too. If you're hungry and you need food and you need support, We'll give you the support. We don't care about your postcode. And that's where a lot of the charities differ because they are focused on numbers and catering for the area. And I'm saying for me, homelessness is bigger than Brixton. Homelessness is everywhere. We can go Miami, you know, there's homelessness over there. You know, and that is the mindset that I'm on right now. So tell me a little bit about Brixton Soup Kitchen. So what do you guys what do you guys get up to there? So, Bricks and Soup Kitchen is a service that provides hot meals and hot drinks for the needy, less fortunate families in and around London. Um, even though we're called Bricks and Soup Kitchen, it doesn't mean we only cater for people in Brixham. We cater for anyone that comes through our doors. Um, we do a lot of training, getting people back into work. We've also got a podcast stream, um, even if it's, you know, help making beats. Anything, you know, litter picking, you know, that's very therapeutic, you know, so we do a lot of litter picking, we've got our gardening workshop, training, you know, so much what the soup kitchen does where people think it's only us providing food, that's the, that's the least of our problem. So what was the story of how you set it up, what, what inspired you to set it up and how did you begin it and just a little bit about that, we go to here. That was funny because it was like... The way, when I handed in my dissertation from the university, I, I studied for social science and youth and community work. And um, the day I handed in my dissertation is the day I was like, I want to start up a soup kitchen. So I literally started off just by giving, um, making tea. So we just had a corner where we could make tea and getting donuts, biscuits, you know, I used to everything used to come in my own pocket. 
until a woman was in Tesco's and she was like, every day I see you coming there making tea and biscuits. No, buying tea and biscuits, what do you do? And I said, oh, I run a soup kitchen. So she was like, oh, okay. And then the next day I went there to do it again. She was like, no, this is all free. This is all free. And then they were like donating to us, you know. So for us, it's just like, it's just so amazing to see people volunteering and supporting. And, you know, it's, it literally is, is, is a lifesaver. So you're in like you're, you've got your own building now. So where where did you where was that? Where did, where did you start off? Was that the same place or no, eventually? So, yeah. No, we started off in in the Mourners Estate. Yeah. Um, called the uh, Southwick House Community Centre, and that was um, a massive opportunity given to us by a woman called Rose Kerr. You know, Rose literally you know believed in the dream, and she was just like you know let's let's do it, you know, and unfortunately our numbers where the numbers were too was it was was getting too much people literally like so much people and then um we was just like we need a new building and that's when we um that's when we got the domino club like where we're based right now so how did you spread the word like how did people start hearing about the um you know when you got the new building how did people find out about it and through social media yeah yeah so like social media, we was just literally just saying to people, look, please, anyone who you know who's struggling, you might be struggling. Just know that we're open Monday to Friday, 10 till 2, come down. We've got hot meals, hot drinks, food packs, warm clothes, jackets, um, hats, gloves, scarves, you name it, you know, we've got it, you know, so utilise us. And you've got like an amazing team that, that help you out. So how did you build that team and who are they? Some of them family, some of them friends. Yeah, so these are all friends, you know. So these were people that come from, they come from like the job centre and they was probably doing like a 16 weeks course and it was like, no, I actually like it. So they've stayed. Um, we've had people going through mental health, family breakdown, mental health, family breakdowns and... They were just like, I like it here, literally. And that is how we've built up such a core based team. So we've got Jennifer, we've got Jennifer number one, Jennifer number two, Miss Esther, um, we've got Annette, we've got Bex, we've got Micah, we've got Pam, we've got we've got Omar, we've got myself, you know, those are the staff, those are the core staff team. We've got Mohammed Hashi, he's a co founder, you know. So for us it's just it's just so amazing that, you know, we've been running for for how long, you know, me not knowing, I, I just know how to do the work, you know, I don't know about policies and procedures and funding and things like that, but during the way, this is what I've had to kind of learn. Yeah, so you co-founded it with a, with a guy called mm-hmm. Mohammed. yeah, how do you guys, how do you, how do you guys know each other? Um, I, I'm, we done a lot doing, within youth work. So we've done a lot within youth work, within Lambeth. And he also had his own um, youth organisation called New Beginnings. And it was just like, while he was doing that, I was in the soup kitchen. And I was just like, bro, I need help with like insurance and policies. And, you know, and then he literally helped us. And I was just like, you know everything that we do. We're, we're both in the in the community game. You might as well just be, you know, a co founder. This is kind of the same. So you're still doing social work? Um, no, nah, I, well. I, I didn't yeah. really dabble in youth work. Youth work, yeah, sorry. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So you're split between, because I feel like you're involved in loads of different things, right? You're doing youth work in the soup kitchen. What else are you involved um, in? Yeah, so I do a little bit of youth work, a little bit of. Um, the soup kitchen stuff. Um, I'm very interested in music, so I'm trying to get into the music industry. So doing a lot of stuff with them as well. Um, doing a lot of stuff with like um, with the festivals as well. So, but with the festivals, it interlinks with young people. So it's just about providing f- um, free festival tickets to young people, and that's across the board. Across the board. Can you, so can you can tell me a bit about the youth works that you've done. So what what is what is that involved in? So yeah. with the youth work yeah. is usually in a centre where young people could kind of come in, 
um, care service. They can also get a hot meal. Um, if they want to go home early, they can. So it's not a thing where they're kept. They can literally come and just chill. So, yeah, so we do a bit of that. Um, and, and, yeah. But, yeah, youth work, youth work has been has been amazing for us because I've been doing youth work for about 16 years. So, I mean, since you set up the, the soup kitchen, like, how, how do you think homelessness has changed around uh, Brixton? You know, because in in, when did you set it up? You said 2014? 2013. Yeah, so what's it, what's it been like since then? You don't really see people holding cardboards. Those times are finished. You know, right now they look good. They look like you and me. You know, it's only when, they, when it comes out of their mouth saying, you know, that they're homeless then that's when you're like, wow, like, this is a shocker, but the amount of people that we see, it's crazy. It's crazy. And you don't just have, like, kind of fully homeless people, do you? You have people who maybe got homes, but, like, partial homelessness. They kind of yeah, just so low on money. and A lot of partial homelessness. Yeah. So people that have got their home, got nothing in there, no rug, no sofa, and they're like, do I put gas on it? Do I put gas on? Do I put electric on? What do I eat? Yeah, yeah. Those are the, the fundamentals that today's Friday, this is the time that they're going to be thinking about what to do. Yeah, yeah. Literally. It's be good to hear a little bit more about what the what the soup kitchen does. So like on a typical week, Monday to Sunday, what do you do on different days and um, um, you've got a kind of schedule and stuff, haven't you? Monday, Monday to Friday is kind of run kind of the same. So it's like uh, Mondays is like we get do- a lot of donations of pizza. We've been getting that for about five years. That's from Frank Kermanka. Um So we don't really have like chefs and that coming in. We've got all the volunteers coming in. Um, main thing, people just kind of coming in. The volunteers will come, set up, set up the urns, set up the biscuits, coffees, teas. And then um, clove bank, the people can go at any time shoes bank they can go at any time and that's throughout the whole week but tuesdays we've got like computer computer sessions and jobs and R and getting people helping with benefits uh wednesdays we've got the back gardening workshop and then from like thursdays and fridays is kind of anything in between so if someone's got a computer they can if they want to do the back garden they want to work on they can so yeah everything's kind of run kind of like the same i mean since since you've been running this this um this soup kitchen like how has this changed your your own life and like your outlook on life and yeah, this what impacts that has changed my life dramatically you know like a lot of people say like look like why are you doing the soup kitchen like you don't get paid but i'm like i don't think you guys understand that like, the experiences i've experienced in the soup kitchen has been immense you know the 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 opportunities is crazy. You know, I get notified when I go anywhere around the world. Like people say, like, "Oh my God, you're the soup kitchen!" Like that in itself, the feeling is amazing. Literally, you know, just getting spotted. You know, I do a lot of talks in schools, and when I walk into the school, the kids act like I'm like I'm Jay Z, mm-hmm. and I'm just like. Hey, I'm just a guy that's giving food to the homeless. But the kids are very excited when I'm walking through and you know, that in itself is just mind blowing, literally. Yeah, how often do you get contacted then to do because you know, you do a lot of talks, don't you? You go to schools and stuff like that. Are you getting requests a lot then to to go and shit spread what you've kind of learned? I get No, do you know when it comes to like summer, I get a lot of emails. Literally. And, you know, I love I love going into the schools. I love it, I love it, I love it. You know, it dies down when it comes to like, now. I think I've got like, maybe like one or two in the email for this month, for next month. But I'm glad that they still do come in though. Mm. I'm glad that they come in. When you go into school, so what do you, what do you, what do you tell them? What do you um, find? Main them? thing, teaching. So I'm teaching them about appreciation, what you have, because there's a lot of young eights, seven, six, five-year-olds that come to the soup kitchen and they have to use what we have at the soup kitchen to go to school 
you know, you guys are quite lucky with your mum will go and buy it for you. You know, you can go and get food. But I just want you to know there's a lot of eight-year-olds that can't do that, you know? Yeah, it's, um, it's something that a lot of young people don't ever get really get exposed to this kind of information, do they? So, yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, if you think about, like, what are some kind of main main lessons you, do you think you've learned then from, from working at this, you know, doing all the volunteering that you've done, so appreciation and, you mm. know, how do you think your life would be different if you hadn't done all this? Like, what, what kind of some main lessons you've learned? I reckon my life would kind of be a bit similar because... If I didn't do this, I would have done youth work. Yeah. So I, I definitely would have been on more money. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I reckon my life would have been a bit similar because this is all of the line of works that I like to do. I mean, you're obviously seeing, you know, a lot of people struggling quite a lot. Um, like, like, is it, is it, like, how does that affect you? Does that, is it, you, you, you seem such an optimistic guy, so, you know, I feel like you're, you're inspired to kind of help, help them with their stuff, but, you know, is that, is that difficult? Yeah, it was only like during COVID where we was getting like um, companies giving us money so we can put electric and gas on people's um, meters. But, you know, COVID's gone now, you know, and a lot of those services are no longer there, you know. So, and right now they're talking about national living crisis, you know, people had national living crisis from years ago. So this is not new to a lot of people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Am I right? You you guys have never been given a grant from government, is that right? No. Do they do they ever give you reasons why? Like, because I guess um, you've applied for them quite a lot, and it's yeah. just about you're in this game, in this charity game, you're competing. So you're competing with the big dogs, and the big dogs fully would have a staff team of ten, only focusing on getting funding. Mm. Left around so now. Now I'm not here to bash no other charities, but crisis only runs a week before Christmas and a week after Christmas. They're closed all year round. All year round, all they're doing is fundraising to get funds. Where the soup kitchen we run all year round, and we're just and we're, and we're just closed two weeks after Christmas because we're like we didn't want to close on Christmas because Christmas is the most busiest day for people and plus people don't have families etc so we want to give them that business feel but you know I got to also think about my staff team as well that because that's where we get you know so much you know you know we're, you know, we're getting dragged from you know from back to forth so always give the staff team a break but getting a break will literally be near to them near to them you got grants from any organizations or like um, that aren't government i guess the only organizations we get grants and will be from trust and foundations because with trust and foundations all we're doing is just letting them know what we do and what the plans are when it comes to um, when it comes to when it comes to funding funding you have to um, there's like so much red tape what makes it what makes it so hard where you have to um, you have to be referred you have to be you know um, there's there's only a certain amount of money that you could spend, you know, and for us, you know, we don't we don't we're we're an open door policy. We don't we don't want people to say to us, you can only go here and you only can go there. You know, for us we want it, we want it to have the freedom where we can go anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as you say you've become a bit of a kind of celebrity, you know, you go around the world, a lot of people know you like and I've seen I saw on YouTube quite a few, you know, interesting people come to you. So Rio Ferdinand came to yeah. The uh the soup kitchen like yeah what are some cool, cool kind of experiences you've had of people showing interest and in, in coming down. We had Ferdinand come down. We've had we've had um, we've had Jogba come down. Um, what's his name? I think it's Andy Cole. Um, 
it's just so it's just so much people literally it just oh while you come down on his birthday you just wanted just to spend time with us on his birthday um and it's just so good where people's just like you know i've got children you know we had peter andre son you know you come down and he was like no look no, no, put me in the kitchen like i want to cook you know and it's just so humbling where people just want to just give back and you know they're not doing it for a fall up they just really just like listen like this is what i enjoy and i want to give back you know joanna lumley oh my god she's been amazing joanna lumley's been amazing jesse Ware, amazing you know so yeah the, the list is the list is ongoing nice one that's that's great uh, well deserved so what like plans have you got for the future maybe with the the soup kitchen or just other stuff in in your life other volunteering things have you got um, any plans for about? us you know we want to as you can see right now we're in peckham and this is a next initiative that we started so it's called the peckham soup kitchen um, right now it's just run on fridays so on um so we're here from from three to about to about um three to about seven is it this thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we're here from three to seven. Again, like I said, make it open to everyone. You know, we don't care about race, religion, postcode, and um, you know, we've got a massive launch um tomorrow as well. So we're just trying to just get everybody to come out and just know we're here. You know, we've got we're definitely supplying um we're supplying food. Do you know what I mean? We 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 we're, we're supplying. So tomorrow we've got we're doing a. Um, a school giveaway we've got backpacks um we've got jackets we've got hats gloves scarves hot meals you know it's it's happening do you know what i mean but again we're mainly launching because we just want the people to know that we're here you know what i mean that's awesome are you planning to go to even more places so you're doing brixton and peckham yeah definitely. can you have you got much of a vision of where yeah you just so want to spread as much as possible wednesdays we do yeah. a thing in harrow road so every wednesday we're on harrow road um and you know i want to go north east south west i want to go everywhere london or england uh, the world, world. <laughs> yeah the world literally just go everywhere and just start something that is, the, I, I keep on saying to people, my ambition is different to a lot of people's. You know, I'm not just thinking about Brixton or I'm thinking about this is a worldwide problem. A worldwide problem. Let's start something worldwide. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, what advice would you give to someone who's, you know, maybe thinking to set up something similar to yours or just help out with, with someone else? It's like, what kind of advice would you Give it to someone. Do it. Go and look for an empty space. Look for a name. Do the basic stuff like insurance, public library insurance. You know, check if, you know, becoming registered. Because, you know, you what you don't want to do is to do a, you know, there's like people like me who will do an amazing service. But I'm crap at paperwork. So I have to get somebody in to do the paperwork, you know. Don't be like me, who's good at doing the service. But then when somebody says, hey, I want to donate you a thousand pound. But we can't because you're not even registered. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, just suit yourself out and just know that things will grow. Things will grow. Trust me. You just got to just put in that work. Trust. What's it like around the rest of the world? Do you know, do you know what? You know how the homelessness in Britain compared to other countries? Because I think you went on like a trip to Portugal or something, right? To give stuff out. What what what's so do you know much about around from Europe? Britain to Portugal, yeah. and we was like, listen, how could we raise the biggest awareness on homelessness through France, Spain, and Portugal? So we said, let's drive. Got the van, the van you saw out there. And we just drove, literally. You know, it was one of the best experiences I've, 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 I've ever done. You know, from being in Brixton, where it's just the climate's like this, and then we're just driving and we're just like, it's getting hot. It's, oh my God, it's getting hot. And we're just seeing the gauge just going from 23 to 29 to 33. And I'm like, I have never seen 
I don't think this man has ever been this hot. Literally, and it was just so crazy that, you know, we're in another country, and I'm like, wow, like, you know, we done, um, we done a homeless challenge as well, where we said, you know, we've been doing a lot of homeless work. Why don't we actually be homeless? We've done that. You know, we said, let's go to Brighton, because if people know that we're going to be homeless in London, people are going to try to help us. Come drive to where we are and maybe give us... Let's go where people can't find us. So we went to Brighton. The only thing we had was our phones, just so we could document stuff. We didn't have no money, nothing. We literally had to find places to sleep. We, we, we ended up in um a car park where there was a bit of warmth and again it allowed me to appreciate that warmth that hour where i can lay in my head you know for me was like staying in a five-star hotel literally and then we snuck in to a cinema not to watch a movie but to sleep so we was just like you sit over there i sit there i sit over there and then the movie was on, we just comped out. And then the movie started, we're thinking, guys, we need to go somewhere else. You know, we need to, right now we're getting hungry, we need to we need to look for food. Then we had to beg, oh, guys, go have a pound, go have a pound, go have a pound. You know, and then, so it, so it gave us that little experience of us not having nothing. And, you know, we went to that, we went to the Brighton and whole, um, town hall and there was like you know you guys you can stay here and then they gave us biscuits and cause so imagine having cha- imagine having change and you have to be very careful on what you're spending your change on do I get water do I get hot tea but I'm cold so I think I might get a hot tea but can I get some biscuits but the pack of biscuits I can't afford it so imagine now going from having a little change in your pocket to then going to this town hall where they're giving you unlimited tea, unlimited biscuits, unlimited sandwiches. And we're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then they moved us from there to a place where we can sleep. It was like staying in a shard. I was like, oh my God. And and then everything that we used is what we provide anyway. So then that's what enhanced our work to be like, you don't know who is going to want this service. Because somebody coming in and they might just want biscuits, they don't, you don't understand that us giving them a hot tea and giving them a biscuit could be a lifesaver. For me, personally, Solomon Smith, that was a massive lifesaver. And just doing that homeless challenge taught me so much about homelessness. Literally, you know, we had people who was with us who wanted to spend their money on alcohol. There was people who was with us who wanted to save up their money to buy cigarettes. And then it taught me, I can't tell you about what you indulge in. Every person, forget about them being homeless, every person has their outlet. My outlet is, you know, a lot of people say, Solomon, like, you do so much. I'm like, I go home, I play Grand Theft Auto, I play, I play train sim. I love trains. So I just love, you know, all the mechanicals and the brakes. And so I would literally be in my zone just playing a train simulator f- from London to, to, to Birmingham because the train simulator is, is actual time of how long it will take. And you got to read the, the signals when to stop. And that literally will clear my head. You know, I like to go for drives. I just, you know, I've always said when I was young, a weird thing again, where does straight take you? If I just go straight and just don't go, just don't stop this guy straight. Now, at my age now, now I can drive, I just go straight. Sometimes I end up in Guildford. Sometimes I end up in Margate. I end up everywhere. I just pull up my tank and I just drive and that is therapy for me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So... While I'm doing everything, I'm also thinking about me as well. And, you know, just understanding that everybody has a different mind. I've got a twin brother. He drinks and he smokes. I don't drink and I don't smoke. But this is my actual twin. 
you know and i and if me and him was to do a homeless challenge he will be looking for money where i'll be looking for money to buy food mm. he's looking to money because he's probably thinking i need a cigarette <laughs> i need a cigarette so it taught me so much literally best best experience in the world mm. literally is that something you think you'll do again maybe at one point then this maybe something definitely. someone definitely. should do every now and then and, definitely yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. because i don't really like you know the ones you see the corporate ones mm. and they're like oh yeah we can do the big sleep out but it's all protected for them so they've got first aiders there they've got food they've got no that's not really it's good good concept but it's not really you sleeping like a homeless person a homeless person don't have no protection they are literally out and that's the reason why we done it we have no protection literally if we cut ourselves we have to find get a rubber band and cover you know what i mean we had to literally do everything you know we had to bunk bus we had to commit crime we literally had to bunk on buses and wherever the bus took us in brian is where it took us because we use that time that we bunked on the bus as he that was us staying on saying i hope this bus can just go there and back and we can just get an hour of sleep and heat when we went into the audience cinemas we had to do it one by one like you go 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 i felt like a kid but then at the same time i was like this is the time i could sleep and just rest and that is what a homeless person is doing every day literally yeah. yeah experiencing it as opposed to just hearing it from someone else completely different isn't it so literally yeah yeah that's so that's really interesting man um yeah so i mean if someone wants to come help out at the brixton soup kitchen what should they what should they do to get involved please please email brixton soup kitchen at gmail.com um go on our website www.brixtonsoupkitchen.com did I say G, did, did I give you the email? Yeah, Brixton Soup Kitchen at gmail.com. Gmail.com. Yeah, nice. I can go to the to our to our um, to our website, BrixtonSoupKitchen.com. And yeah, man, we've got um, um, a form. It will go straight to the volunteer coordinator. We do a lot of corporate volunteers as well. So if you are a corporate and you just always wanted to just kind of give back, please, man, just make Brixton Soup Kitchen our uh, chosen charity for twenty twenty three. Thanks a lot, yeah. Solomon. Taking time, I know you're a busy guy, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thanks, and, and yeah. good luck with everything, and you know, just well done on all the amazing work you've done, man. You're a Thank unique you guy. So much. Yeah, Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Thank man. You, man. Appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you enjoyed the Human Podcast, please consider subscribing. I hope to see you soon.